Hi, friends. I am Annie F. Downs. Let's read the Gospels. The Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament and the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the stories of Jesus Christ's life on earth, the friendships, the parables, the sacrifices, the meals, the miracles. Each month here on Let's Read the Gospels, we read all four books in 30 days. That means we read about three chapters a day. So if you haven't subscribed, do it right now so you don't miss any of the episodes. And remember, we have a downloadable reading plan if you want to follow along that way, or there's a Let's Read the Gospels guidebook that contains some extra notes from me and journal prompts, questions, some really fun stuff. And that reading plan is in the guidebook, so you get that as well. You can find all that at AnnieFDowns.com slash Gospels. So here's how today is going to work. I'll read three chapters to you. You can listen or read along in your own Bible, and then I'll pray, and that's it. So today is August 7th, day 7. I'll be reading Matthew chapters 19 through 21, and this month I'm reading from The Message. Matthew 19. When Jesus had completed these teachings, he left Galilee and crossed the region of Judea on the other side of the Jordan. Great crowds followed him there, and he healed them. One day, the Pharisees were badgering him. Is it legal for a man to divorce his wife for any reason? He answered, Haven't you read in your Bible that the Creator originally made man and woman for each other, male and female? And because of this, a man leaves a father and mother and is firmly bonded to his wife, becoming one flesh, no longer two bodies, but one. Because God created this organic union of the two sexes, no one should desecrate his art by cutting them apart. They shot back in rebuttal. If that's so, why did Moses give instructions for divorce papers and divorce procedures? Jesus said, Moses provided for divorce as a concession to your hard-heartedness, but it is not part of God's original plan. I'm holding you to the original plan and holding you liable for adultery if you divorce your faithful wife and then marry someone else. I make an exception in cases where the spouse has committed adultery. Jesus' disciples objected. If those are the terms of marriage, we haven't got a chance. Why get married? But Jesus said, not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. It requires a certain aptitude and grace. Marriage isn't for everyone. Some, from birth seemingly, never give marriage a thought. Others never get asked or accepted. And some decide not to get married for kingdom reasons. But if you're capable of growing into the largeness of marriage, do it. One day, children were brought to Jesus in the hope that he would lay hands on them and pray over them. The disciples shooed them off, but Jesus intervened. Let the children alone. Don't prevent them from coming to me. God's kingdom is made up of people like these. After laying hands on them, he left. Another day, a man stopped Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Jesus said, Why do you question me about what's good? God is the one who is good. If you want to enter the life of God, just do what he tells you. The man asked, What in particular? Jesus said, Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't lie. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as you do yourself. The young man said, I've done all that. What's left? If you want to give it all you've got, Jesus replied, go sell your possessions. Give everything to the poor. All your wealth will then be in heaven. Then come follow me. That was the last thing the young man expected to hear. And so, crestfallen, he walked away. He was holding on tight to a lot of things, and he couldn't bear to let go. As he watched him go, Jesus told his disciples, Do you have any idea how difficult it is for the rich to enter God's kingdom? Let me tell you, it's easier to gallop a camel through a needle's eye than for the rich to enter God's kingdom. The disciples were staggered. Then who has any chance at all? Jesus looked hard at them and said, No chance at all if you think you can pull it off yourself. Every chance in the world if you trust God to do it. Then Peter chimed in, We left everything and followed you. What do we get out of it? Jesus replied, Yes, you have followed me. In the recreation of the world, when the Son of Man will rule gloriously, you who have followed me will also rule, starting with the twelve tribes of Israel. And not only you, but anyone who sacrifices, home, family, fields, whatever, because of me, will get it all back a hundred times over, not to mention the considerable bonus of eternal life. This is the great reversal. Many of the first ending up last, and the last first. Matthew 20. 
God's kingdom is like an estate manager who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. They agreed on a wage of a dollar a day and went to work. Later, about nine o'clock, the manager saw some other men hanging around the town square unemployed. He told them to go to work in his vineyard and he would pay them a fair wage. They went. He did the same thing at noon and again at three o'clock. At five o'clock, he went back and found still others standing around. He said, why are you standing around all day doing nothing? They said, because no one hired us. He told them to go to work in his vineyard. When the day's work was over, the owner of the vineyard instructed his foreman, call the workers in and pay them their wages. Start with the last hired and go on to the first. Those hired at five o'clock came up and were each given a dollar. When those who were hired first saw that, they assumed they would get far more, but they got the same, each of them one dollar. Taking the dollar, they groused angrily to the manager. These last workers put in only one easy hour, and you just made them equal to us who slaved all day under a scorching sun. He replied to the one speaking for the rest, Friend, I haven't been unfair. We agreed on the wage of a dollar, didn't we? So take it and go. I decided to give to the one who came last the same as you. Can't I do what I want with my own money? Are you going to get stingy because I am generous? Here it is again, the great reversal, many of the first ending up last and the last first. Jesus, now well on the way up to Jerusalem, took the 12 off to the side of the road and said, listen to me carefully. We are on our way up to Jerusalem. When we get there, the son of man will be betrayed to the religious leaders and scholars. They will sentence him to death. They will then hand him over to the Romans for mockery and torture and crucifixion. On the third day, he will be raised up alive. It was about that time that the mother of the Zebedee brothers came with her two sons and knelt before Jesus with a request. What do you want? Jesus asked. She said, give your word that these two sons of mine will be awarded the highest places of honor in your kingdom, one at your right hand, one at your left hand. Jesus responded, you have no idea what you're asking. And he said to James and John, Are you capable of drinking the cup that I'm about to drink? They said, sure, why not? Jesus said, come to think of it, you are going to drink my cup. But as to awarding places of honor, that's not my business. My father is taking care of that. When the 10 others heard about this, they lost their tempers, thoroughly disgusted with the two brothers. So Jesus got them together to settle things down. He said, You've observed how godless rulers throw their weight around, how quickly a little power goes to their heads. It's not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve, not be served, and then to give away his life in exchange for the many who are held hostage. As they were leaving Jericho, a huge crowd followed. Suddenly, they came upon two blind men sitting alongside the road. When they heard it was Jesus passing, they cried out, Master, have mercy on us. Mercy, son of David. The crowd tried to hush them up, but they got all the louder, crying, Master, have mercy on us. Mercy, son of David. Jesus stopped and called over, What do you want from me? They said, Master, we want our eyes opened. We want to see. Deeply moved, Jesus touched their eyes. They had their sight back that very instant and joined the procession. Matthew 21. When they neared Jerusalem, having arrived at Bethphage on Mount Olives, Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. Go over to the village across from you. You'll find a donkey tethered there, her colt with her. Untie her and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, say, the master needs them. He will send them with you. This is the full story of what was sketched earlier by the prophet. Tell Zion's daughter, look, your king's on his way, poised and ready, mounted on a donkey, on a colt, full of a pack animal. The disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They led the donkey and colt out, laid some of their clothes on them, and Jesus mounted. Nearly all the people in the crowd threw their garments down on the road, giving him a royal welcome. Others cut branches from the trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed, all of them calling out, Hosanna to David's son. Blessed is he who comes in God's name. Hosanna in highest heaven. 
As he made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken. Unnerved, people were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? The parade crowd answered, this is the prophet Jesus, the one from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus went straight to the temple and threw out everyone who had set up shop buying and selling. He kicked over the tables of loan sharks and the stalls of dove merchants. He quoted this text, My house was designated a house of prayer. You have made it a hangout for thieves. Now there was room for the blind and crippled to get in. They came to Jesus and he healed them. When the religious leaders saw the outrageous things he was doing and heard all the children running and shouting through the temple, Hosanna to David's son, They were up in arms and took him to task. Do you hear what these children are saying? Jesus said, yes, I hear them. And haven't you read in God's word from the mouths of children and babies, I'll furnish a place of praise. Fed up, Jesus spun around and left the city for Bethany where he spent the night. Early the next morning, Jesus was returning to the city. He was hungry. Seeing a lone fig tree alongside the road, he approached it anticipating a breakfast of figs. When he got to the tree, there was nothing but fig leaves. He said, no more figs from this tree ever. The fig tree withered on the spot, a dry stick. The disciples saw it happen. They rubbed their eyes saying, did we really see this? A leafy tree one minute, a dry stick the next? But Jesus was matter of fact. Yes, and if you embrace this kingdom life and don't doubt God, you not only do minor feats like I did to the fig tree, but also triumph over huge obstacles. This mountain, for instance, you'll tell, go jump in the lake and it will jump. Absolutely everything, ranging from small to large, as you make it a part of your believing prayer, gets included as you lay hold of God. Then he was back in the temple teaching. The high priests and leaders of the people came up and demanded, show us your credentials. Who authorized you to teach here? Jesus responded, first, let me ask you a question. You answer my question and I'll answer yours. About the baptism of John, who authorized it, heaven or humans? They were on the spot and knew it. They pulled back into a huddle and whispered, If we say heaven, he'll ask us why we didn't believe him. If we say humans, we're up against it with the people because they all hold John up as a prophet. They decided to concede that round to Jesus. We don't know, they answered. Jesus said, Then neither will I answer your question. Tell me what you think of this story. A man had two sons. He went up to the first and said, Son, go out for the day and work in the vineyard. The son answered, I don't want to. Later on, he thought better of it and went. The father gave the same command to the second son. He answered, Sure, glad to, but he never went. Which of the two sons did what the father asked? They said, The first. Jesus said, Yes, and I tell you that crooks and whores are going to precede you into God's kingdom. John came to you, showing you the right road. You turned up your noses at him, but the crooks and whores believed him. Even when you saw their changed lives, you didn't care enough to change and believe him. Here's another story. Listen closely. There was once a man, a wealthy farmer, who planted a vineyard. He fenced it, dug a wine press, put up a watchtower, then turned it over to the farmhands and went off on a trip. When it was time to harvest the grapes, he sent his servants back to collect his profits. The farmhands grabbed the first servant and beat him up. The next one they murdered. They threw stones at the third, but he got away. The owner tried again, sending more servants. They got the same treatment. The owner was at the end of his rope. He decided to send his son. Surely, he thought, they will respect my son. But when the farmhands saw the son arrive, they rubbed their hands in greed. This is the heir. Let's kill him and have it all for ourselves. They grabbed him threw him out, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard arrives home from his trip, what do you think he will do to the farmhands? He'll kill them. A rotten bunch and good riddance, they answered. Then he'll assign the vineyard to farmhands who will hand over the profits when it's time. Jesus said, right. And you can read it for yourselves in your Bibles. The stone the masons threw out is now the cornerstone. This is God's work. We rub our eyes. We can hardly believe it. This is the way it is with you. God's kingdom will be taken back from you and handed over to a people who will live out a kingdom life. Whoever stumbles on this stone gets shattered. Whoever the stone falls on gets smashed. When the religious leaders heard this story, they knew it was aimed at them. They wanted to arrest Jesus and put him in jail, but intimidated by public opinion, they held back. 
Most people held him to be a prophet of God. That is Matthew 19 through 21 in the message. Let's pray. Jesus, I like in Matthew 21 where you talk about that everything ranging from small to large gets included when we lay hold of prayer and of God. And I just thank you today, Jesus, that nothing's too small for you, that there's no prayer that is too small, that it is unimportant to God, and there's no prayer too big that we shouldn't bring it. And so thank you that even in this verse, you are telling us and reminding us that we can pray about absolutely anything and everything. So remind us to pray for everything. Remind us even today, even as we finish this prayer, would you just tell us the next thing to pray that you're like, know what matters to us. <laughs> the next thing to pray that you know is important to us. And um, so even when I say amen, we'll keep praying. Yeah, we love you, Jesus. We trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.